The cell cycle has to be controlled because cells cannot just continuously divide. We'll learn on a future slide that when cells just continuously divide without any sort of um, kind of restriction, that's actually what causes cancer. So different cells in the body reproduce at different rates. And so the, the cell needs to be able to get signals to tell it when it needs to go through mitosis and when it should not. So some examples of different cells that reproduce at different rates include things like embryonic development. So for embryonic development, remember that you are made up of an egg and a sperm that combine together to form a zygote. Now that zygote then goes through cell divisions, and this is what embryonic development is. So one cell becomes two cells, two cells becomes four cells, four cells become eight, and they just keep doubling and this happens really quickly so it might only take um, hours or maybe a day in order for these um, mitotic events to occur and that's because during embryonic development you're basically forming a baby and so you start out as a single cell and you ultimately end up making a person <laughs> out of that now things like epithelial tissue. So epithelial tissue is found in places like the skin and also like the inside of your mouth and all kind of lining your digestive tract and also your respiratory tract. So basically these kind of inside pathways that are going through your body have this epithelial tissue on them. And so epithelial tissue is designed for wear and tear. And that's because it's constantly regenerating itself. So it's kind of like when you scrape your skin, it's not that big of a deal. And within a couple of days, that scrape or, or cut is going to heal. And that's because those cells in the epithelial tissue can divide every couple of days. And in fact, they're just constantly making new cells to replace the cells that are damaged or destroyed or lost due to wear and tear. Other cells, like neurons and cardiac muscle cells, are never going to divide again once they're formed. And that's one reason why damage to the cells are so, so dangerous, because if you damage neurons or you damage your cardiac muscle cells, they cannot be replaced or regenerated. So that's why nerve damage can often lead to long-term permanent loss of function or sensation in an area. And if you have a heart attack and it kills off cardiac muscle cells, it will actually decrease the efficiency of the heart. So the cell cycle is controlled by factors both inside the cell and outside the cell. So first of all, if a cell gets damaged, it can actually send out chemicals. So let's say this cell gets damaged. It can actually send out little chemical messengers to nearby cells to trigger them to start going through mitosis. And in doing so, it can help to form new cells or new tissue in order to heal the damaged area. Also things like hormones. So growth hormone is what triggers you, the cells in your body to replicate so that you can grow as you're growing up as a child. Things like thyroid hormone is involved in this as well. There are also factors inside the cell that can help to determine whether the cell will continue through the cell cycle. So we can see on this picture here that we have a checkpoint that happens towards the end of the G1 phase. And this checkpoint is where the cell is going to make sure that it has everything it needs in order to make new DNA. So it's gonna have like a little checkbox or a little check mark where it's gonna say, okay, do we have enough nucleotides? Do we have enough ATP? Do we have enough proteins? Do we have enough nutrients in order to go through the next step of the cell cycle? Another checkpoint is the G2 checkpoint. And this one is looking to make sure that everything is ready for the cell to go through mitosis. So it makes sure that the chromosomes were copied properly. So did the S phase work? So chromosomes copied. Is the cell big enough to eventually split in half? Because that's what's going to happen during mitosis. Is there enough ATP present for the energy required to go through mitosis? Um, are there enough proteins present for um, things like making 
new structures, making the mitotic spindle um, and making enzymes that might be needed for mitosis to occur. Yet another checkpoint is the M checkpoint, which is the mitosis checkpoint. And um, this can also stand for the metaphase checkpoint because what it means is that, remember that during metaphase, a cell has these chromosomes lined up in the middle of the cell. And these chromosomes are supposed to be attached to these microtubules that make up the mitotic spindle. Because during anaphase, those, the two sister chromatids of those chromosomes are going to get pulled apart. But let's say that one of them doesn't actually attach to the chromosome like it's, like it's supposed to. That would be a failure to make it past the M checkpoint and the cell would stop going through mitosis. If the controlling factors of the cell cycle break down and they stop controlling the cell cycle, we can end up with these kind of rogue cells that are going through mitosis when they should not be going through mitosis. And this uncontrolled cell growth or, or cell division is known as cancer. And so cancer is just any time your cells start dividing when they're not supposed to divide. Now, this uncontrolled cell growth can be caused by these um, checkpoints uh, not catching things like damage to DNA. So during DNA replication, we've got some proofreading that happens. During the checkpoints, um, the cell is supposed to make sure that the DNA was replicated properly and the chromosomes are formatted properly, but sometimes mistakes still get through to the next step. Now this is especially a problem when DNA damages the proteins or the enzymes involved in cell regulation. And in another assignment or activity you're going to be completing, you're, you're going to learn more about tumor suppressor genes. and proto-oncogenes. And if there's a mutation or some sort of problem with the replication of these genes, of the DNA that codes for these genes, what happens is that it damages these proteins that are involved in regulating cell division. And when the cell division regulation breaks down, we end up with cancer. So there are a lot of different factors that can damage DNA. And remember with DNA, we're talking about genes and genes code for proteins. So if we're damaging the DNA, we're changing the recipe, which means that we're changing the, the proteins that are being made based on that damaged gene. And so things that can damage the DNA and therefore change the gene or the recipe for these proteins includes things like exposure to certain chemicals. We know that things like cigarette smoke can lead to lung cancer. Certain forms of pollution can also lead to um, lung cancer and other cancers in the body. Asbestos is a chemical that was used to make uh, building materials uh, fire resistant and they didn't find out until it was kind of too late that people that worked with it that were inhaling this asbestos were actually started to develop a certain type of lung cancer that was specifically caused by that chemical. Things like radiation exposure can also lead to cancer. So we know that too, um, exposure to too much UV radiation can cause skin cancer and also the radiation associated things like nuclear power plants. So if a nuclear power plant uh, melts down, which is what happened in Chernobyl and in Fukushima um, after the tsunami, what happens is that if that radiation gets released into the air, it can cause cancer. Also things like age. So um, as you are getting older, your DNA is replicating more and more. So the more times your DNA is replicated, the more likely you are to um, kind of build up these, these damages or these mutations in your DNA. So that's why the older you get, the, your chances of getting cancer increase. It can also just be due to genetics that you inherited. And so it's possible that you can inherit a gene that was already damaged from your parent, which then makes you more susceptible to cancer in the future. So as I mentioned, cancer is just this kind of uncontrolled cell growth where these cells are going through mitosis even when they shouldn't be. 
Now, this can lead to the formation of tumors, and a tumor is just a mass of abnormal cells. Now, not all tumors are cancerous in the sense that not all of them are going to spread around the body. So there is a difference between a benign tumor and a malignant tumor. So a benign tumor is one that is forming, but the tumor is not going to break off and spread to other parts of the body. So the abnormal cells typically stay where they are being formed. Um, typically, these can be removed, but of course, there is a possibility that they might be in an area of the body where removal, you know, doing surgery to remove it would actually cause more damage than just leaving the tumor where it is. Um, they typically don't cause problems unless they start to get too big, in which case they might start interfering with the blood supply to other areas, or it might start putting pressure on surrounding tissues, which can cause problems. Now, if a tumor has become malignant or metastatic, it means that part of that tumor can actually break off. So some of the cells in that tumor can break off and it can travel to other parts of the body. And then once those abnormal cells find someplace else in the body to kind of hang out, then they start to grow there as well. And so that is what we mean by if cancer has metastasized or if a tumor is malignant, it means that it has spread beyond its origin. So for example, with breast cancer, it becomes especially dangerous if it has become metastatic. So um, a woman can live without her breasts. So if a tumor forms and they catch it early enough, they can either do a lumpectomy or a mastectomy in order to remove the breast tissue and get rid of the cancer. It is a much bigger problem when it starts spreading to other parts of the body, especially if it spreads to places like the lungs or the brain or the liver, because these structures are harder to operate on and once the cancer takes hold, it can be much more serious and life-threatening. There are some treatments for cancer. Some are more successful than others, and it kind of depends on the types of cancer um, and how far it has spread and where it has spread in the body. So the more traditional cancer treatments include radiation therapy and chemotherapy. Both of these are aimed at trying to kill those, the tumor cells and kill the cells that are rapidly dividing. And sometimes these are used in conjunction with surgery. So they may use radiation and chemotherapy to try to shrink a tumor to make it easier to surgically remove it. Now there are some newer drugs that are being developed that can um, basically target enzymes that are only found in tumor cells. And the nice thing is about these drugs is that they're, they're much more targeted, so you don't have the, as many I should say, they don't have as many of the systemic side effects that come with chemotherapy and radiation. So for example, with chemotherapy, you're basically putting this, this really harsh drug into a person's body, and it's damaging not only the cancerous cells, but also the healthy cells. So these more targeted treatments can only attack the cancer cells without attacking all of the other healthy cells in the body.